what does it mean that um, Christ is in us? Now, you see, um, many passages of Scripture communicate that uh, Jesus uh, lives within those who trust him for salvation. And this uh, we can see in the book of 2 Corinthians 13.5. It says, examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobate. Jesus is in us. Now, while this is an astonishing truth, it isn't easy to grasp. Not only is Jesus Christ alive today, but through God's Holy Spirit, uh, which is called the Spirit of Christ, uh, as is written in Romans 8, 9. Let me show you Romans. Romans uh, 8, verse 9. Okay. He lives in us. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So, the Spirit of Christ lives in you. The Holy Spirit. Okay? And you can be able to understand that. Now, we have to see something here. Paul, often, um, the Apostle Paul, he often spoke of Christ taking up residence in the hearts of those who accept him as Lord and Savior. When he prayed for the believers in Ephesus, Paul longed for their faith to, to deepen so that Christ will be at home in their hearts. Okay? Do you remember what he said in the book of Ephesians 3.16? Ephesians uh, 3.16. Do you remember? Paul telling them to have their faith deepen. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So, his spirit in the inner man, meaning Christ is living in you. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all fullness of God. This is Paul speaking about that. Now you see, when, when a person believes in Jesus, he or she is uh, united to Christ. He's uh, united to Christ first um, in his death and then in the newness of his resurrection life. So he, when the Bible says that uh, um, you have been crucified with Christ and uh, you no longer live but Christ lives in you, it means exactly that that, that it, it's like you were there on that cross with jesus christ when he was being crucified and uh, if jesus died then you also died if jesus rose then you also rose so you're with him the only thing which is making us uh, a bit different right now is because our our fleshly body has not been transformed this is the flesh and that's why we have two parts in us we have two beings living in, in 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 one you have the flesh and you have the spiritual body so the bible tells us in ephesians uh, uh 4 30 and do not grieve the holy spirit by whom in which you are sealed unto the day of redemption so that day of redemption the day of the rapture your body will be transformed and you'll get the other nature and now you'll be completely completely the way christ is okay when he left here are you understanding the point so the bible tells us that you're being crucified with christ let me read for you galatians 2 20 galatians 2 20 it tells us we are crucified with christ okay i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ lives in me so you see you already die you're already dead so it is not you who is living now. It is Christ living in you. And the life which now I live 
In the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay? And even the Bible continues and says, And I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So if you're trying to do some things to justify yourself in different ways, you, you have to remember one thing, that this is what happened with you. When Christ was at that cross, you also died with him. When Christ was buried, you were buried with him. When he rose, you rose with him. So now what is living is not you. The you, the you, the Keith is already dead. He was already buried and the ceremony was 2,000 years ago. Now who is living is Christ living in you. And that's why you're told you're the body of Christ. What you have is not your own body. You are the body of Christ. You have to understand this point, okay? So Paul explained to the church in Rome also, he said, For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to life as he was. Let me confirm this to you, Romans 6, 4. Uh, Romans uh, 6, verse 4 to 5. See what the Bible says. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of his Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Are you getting what I'm telling you? So we are planted and we have been raised together. Okay? So our lives become a vehicle, we're just like a vehicle, to display the life of Christ. Okay? We're just like a vehicle. We should be displaying the life of Christ. Jesus was the light. Okay? Because the Bible says, For God who said, uh, He said, let, let light shine out of darkness. Okay? And he made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory, which is displayed in the face of Christ. We are the light of God. Remember, Jesus is the light. So if you're living, make sure you let your light to shine. Make sure that you let Jesus be seen in you. You cannot confess you're a Christian, a true believer, but then you live like the devil. Where is your light? Where is your light? Let your light shine in your heart so that you can give the light of the knowledge of God's glory which is displayed in the face of uh, Christ to out to the world. Okay? Let me show you 2 Corinthians 4, 6. 2 Corinthians uh, 4, 4 verse 6. See what it says. We can read up to 10. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But you have this treasure in earthen vessels. So what you have is a vessel. Your body is just a vessel. That the excellency of the power may, uh, the power may be of God and not of us. When, when you walk, when you talk, when you do everything, you're just a vessel. It is God who is inside you and is speaking from you. So his power should be seen from you. And the Bible continues in verse 8, it says, We are troubled on every side, yet not desert, deserted, uh, uh, distressed. We are perplexed but not in despair, persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body of the dying Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. So we go through all these persecutions just the same way Jesus went through all those persecutions and he came out. He came out with a great testimony. So when you talk about I've been buried and blah, 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 and all these things are happening. I've been, uh, uh, I'm going through trials and tribulations and, tribulations and uh, problems and people mocking me because of the gospel. 
understand, remember, that just the same way Jesus went through all these things and he came out triumphantly, that's exactly how you will. And you should let your light shine to the world and let people be able to see. For sure, this is how Christ looks like. Okay? So, in our ordinary human condition of weakness, we are but jars of clay holding a priceless a priceless treasure, which is the life of Christ in us. The challenges we face, the persecutions, the trials. I know it happens so much to many of us as Christians. Trials, hardships, sufferings that we endure. All these serve to pour out the all-surpassing power of God and reveal the life of Jesus to those around us. We can rest assured that we will not be overcome in all these afflictions because we have the treasure of Jesus living in us. That is something that you have to understand. And uh, in 2 Corinthians 2.15, Paul likened the life of those who share the gospel to a Christ-like fragrance, okay? A pleasing savour, okay? A, 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 a fragrance rising up to God. Okay, let me read to you in 2 Corinthians 2.15, uh, 2 Corinthians 2 verse 15, see what it says here. It says, for we are unto God a sweet server of Christ, in them that are saved, and in them that perish. You see, whether you're, um, you, 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 you're living, or what, or even if you perish, we are a sweet server of Christ. In them okay you, you you understand one thing when, when when the Bible talks about this it talks about that uh, everything that we do in our lives should be a representation of Christ now sometimes we may pass through hard times we may even be killed remember the Apostles they were killed many of them I think all of them just except one, maybe the Apostle John, who died in Patmos. And uh, people can look and say, if, if this is the kind of life a Christian goes through, of suffering, of trials and tribulations and, and of pain, why would I be a Christian? But the Bible tells us very well that, that God is pleased with us. Everything that we do, whether we are alive, whether we perish in the whole thing, whether we go through trials until we are no more it's a sweet server because that's exactly what happened to jesus at the cross remember and he passed through all that and through him winning this victory right now he will he he's uh, he's he has triumphed and also if we are in christ and christ is in us then definitely we have to carry the life of christ that is not an exception we have to understand that. So, with Christ in us, we spread the good news of salvation in Jesus and we diffuse his fragrance. Okay? We diffuse his fragrance, his fragrance to lost, to a lost and dying world. And you have to remember in 1 Corinthians 6.19, Paul states that you do not know that, he states, don't you know he asked his people, don't you know that your bodies, your body is what? The temple of the Holy Spirit? Don't you know? He was asking people who are out there and probably they don't understand. See what it says in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 6.19. 1 Corinthians 6.19. It says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not of your own? For you are bought with the price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So what you have is not yours. You're just a temple. You're just a, you know, a vessel. Okay? You're a vessel. You're not of your own. And after we receive Jesus as Lord, he becomes our master. You know, in a, there's a certain booklet 
There's a certain booklet uh, which is called My Heart, Christ's Home by someone called uh, Robert Boyd Munge or Munge. I don't know how to explain. This is a uh, an imaginatively um, booklet which describes the Christian life as a house. Okay, when Jesus enters. He goes from room to room in the library of our minds and uh, he sorts through the garbage, cleaning out the worthless uh, trash in the kitchen. He deals with our unhealth, uh, unhealthy appetites and sinful desires. At the dining room table, he serves us the bread of life to satisfy our hungry souls and pour us living water for us to drink and uh, that we should never be thirst again through dark hallways and closets jesus uncovers all the places where sin hides he walks his way through every nook and cranny until his love mercy forgiveness and grace have filled every place this alle this allegory presents a beautiful picture of what it means to have christ in us you know, Christ is always, is always desiring to be in you. He wants to be in you so that he can be the ruler of your vessel, your body. And this will give you assurance that you will not go to hell. Why? Because Jesus cannot go to hell. And if, he's, if Christ is in you, then there is no way you will be able to go to hell. So this is an assurance of us that you can't lose your salvation. At times, you may find you've done wrong things. You've gone against him in one way or another. But just like in any family, there are good sons and bad sons. They are obedient children and disobedient children. And the disobedient children, their father always corrects them. He will correct you. And that's why... It, salvation is something that you have to realize, understand, and then you accept. And you believe, through believing, the Holy Spirit comes inside you. As the Bible tells us in Ephesians, in Ephesians 1 verses 13, immediately you believe the Holy Spirit comes inside you. And when he comes inside you, he's sealed there. Okay? See what the Bible says, in whom you also trusted. That after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed. You see, the Holy Spirit is sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Now, what is the work of that Holy Spirit? He is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. So, is the assurance that for sure you will be redeemed. It's the assurance that for sure you will go to heaven. And that's why the Bible says in Ephesians, in Ephesians 4, verses 30, like I just told you, when that Holy Spirit is inside you, the Bible tells you, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. He is sealed there. He is not coming out from you. So don't grieve him when you do wrong things against God. You grieve the Holy Spirit. That's why a saved person cannot enjoy sin. Whenever you do something sinful, you feel grieving inside. It is not you grieving. It is the Holy Spirit grieving in you. Because uh, a lost person cannot grieve, cannot feel anything. They will murder someone and they will not feel anything. They will lie and they will not feel anything. Whenever you find yourself, you have lied or you have done something wrong and you're a Christian and you feel bad, it is the Holy Spirit grieving inside you. Are you understanding the point? So it's very important for you to make sure that you let Christ be in you in the form of the Holy Spirit. And the only way you can let him in you is through the gospel. You have to believe the gospel. Remember what the Bible said here um, in, in the other verse which I just read? That uh, do not grieve. Uh, I mean... Uh, when you believe, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. So you believe what? The gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's all about how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again. 
as written in the scriptures. When you understand how and why he had to die, and you believe it in your heart and you confess it out to him. You tell him, Jesus, now I understand that you died for my sins. You are buried and rose again, as the scripture says. My friends, you are saved and you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and sanctified unto the day of redemption. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you have been able to understand something. And if you are there and you are still not saved, please get saved. The days are moving on and we never know when he will be coming. Thank you very much. You can... Uh, like this video, you can share the video to other people so that they can be able to understand. And also as well, you can subscribe to watch more videos which we post every day to, uh, to enlighten the people of God. Thank you and God bless you.